heaven. O my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, now to his altar draw near, joining in glad adoration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we join together on Mary's feast, we know that what we say of Mary, what we believe of Mary should also be true of us. She was the first believer, the first to receive the Lord into her life, but we too are called to do the same in different ways, but the same. And so what we celebrate today is where Mary has gone, we can go. She joined the Lord in the resurrection, which is our hope, our promise, our future. Coming together then on this feast, mindful of God's great love for us, we pause for a moment, we reflect upon our own lives, the times we have failed, the times we have sinned, we ask for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you assume the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory. Grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelations. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and waved, wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven di diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her when she gave birth, her child devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in the heavens say, now have salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God and the authority of this, his anointed one. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen stands in your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at the right hand in gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. 
The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are borne in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at the right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all died, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in a proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. We might ask, why is it that we, the church, hold Mary in such great esteem? And the answer might seem counterintuitive. The reason is not because she is so different from us, but because she and we share the same humanity. We are one. Mary was not some goddess. Mary did not have the vision of everything that was going to come. Mary was asked to say yes to the Lord, even as we are, and she did not know what that meant, even as we do not. 
Mary was human and real. And she was the first to believe, the first to welcome the Lord into her life, but also the one who at somewhere in her mid-40s had her son dead from the cross lying in her lap. We read in scripture that, you know, the swords will pierce her heart, and they did. But she continued day by day to be faithful even as we are called. And that fidelity was not something that happened because once Mary said, yes, I'll do whatever God wants, but because it was renewed day after day after day, even as for ourselves it must be. I often tell young couples, or older ones too, if the only time that you promise to be faithful to each other is at your wedding, you're in big trouble. If that doesn't happen again and again, and for those of us who are ordained, if the last time I took this thing seriously was back in May of 1979, you're in trouble as much as I am. We need to renew this every day. We need to renew our baptism. Mary, Mary being taken up to heaven is for us a promise and a sign of hope. Mary was not baptized, but being baptized, we are baptized not only into the Lord's death, but also into his resurrection. You know, I was tempted to light the Easter candle, but it's not Easter, and it's not a funeral, and it's not a baptism. But to unite us with that is so important because it's always at baptism. That is the primary sacrament. It trumps all the others because without it, there's no Eucharist, there's no marriage, there's no orders, there's nothing. And so we must be faithful to our baptism as best we can. I coined a phrase last night, which I'm sure other people have said before, but I never heard it before. Because Mary was sinless, you and I can try to sin less. Got it? Isn't that clever? Now, other people have said it. I don't know. It came to me like by the Holy Spirit last night at Mass, so who knows. But it's something we can remember. Because she was sinless, we can sin less. We can be more faithful. We can be more true. And in the end, because we are in the same cohort with Mary, the mother of God, what is said of her in prayer should be able to be said of us. Full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among people. These three things, which we say in the Hail Mary, should be able to be said of all of us. The Eucharist gives us strength. The Eucharist allows us to walk on this journey the Eucharist is our life so that we too can be with Mary who always is with Jesus. And so we renew our faith, the faith of our baptism. As I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, who rose again from the dead and sits now at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In the same faith, we turn to the Lord in prayer, praying for ourselves, praying for our loved ones, for our parish, our church, our nation, for God's people scattered throughout the whole world. Following the example of Mary, May all who hear the word of God, keep it in the ways they live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That justice and peace will flourish throughout the world, our world. 
for all who endure the tragedies of war, including the people of Ukraine and Sudan, and all the troubled regions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering people of Maui and all who work to care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this assembly, our families, and our parish, may we receive the Lord Jesus in our lives, as did Mary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died will be welcomed to the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are the source, the giver of every gift. Hear our prayers, those which we have spoken, those which remain in our hearts, and in granting us so many things, teach us through them to serve one another always, following the example of Mary, who did all that she could for your Son, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. I had to give a quick count to be sure we have enough hosts. I was not trying to decide who gets one and who doesn't, don't worry. Thank you, Phil, for reminding me. There are baskets here if you have any offerings to place there. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice, which is mine and yours, may be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this offering, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to all your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death your will to reconcile yourself, reconciled us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of his, your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Claire of Assisi, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, in Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
us, God, through all our life be near. 